I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about Node.js, CSS buttons, PNG compression, and more. Let's check it out. First up is Type Hunting, which is this really cool Tumblr blog that captures all sorts of vintage typography. So if we take a look, there's just a bunch of really nice photographs here. You can scroll down. There's uh, this 7-Up crest or 7-Up logo. I guess maybe they had some sort of logo like this at some point, or maybe that's something somebody just made. I'm not really sure. Uh, but they have all of these just beautiful examples of typography. Really great source of inspiration if you're looking for some when you're making a website. Aren't we all? Pretty simple stuff. I'm but always looking for inspiration, Nick. Really nice photos. Like it. Next up, we have a website called the Random User Generator. When you're programming and you need some seed data, it's a lot better than just using lorem ipsum text. This will actually get user data for you. It'll give you an avatar, names, email addresses, kind of everything you need. That's uh, much better than just using JSON for every single user on your website. Depending on your preferences. I mean, let's let's not make that kind of sweeping generalization right now. That's true. You have these pearly whites. So, um, yeah, so it's really, really easy to use. You just do a quick Ajax callback to randomuser.me. Um, you can return one to several users, give it the uh, gender you want, and even a different seed to um, speed up your application. Very, very quick, very, very easy to use, but still something that's really nice and useful when you're going through developing a website. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Unsplash. Now, if you've been on the internets recently, you may have noticed that a lot of websites are going for these really nice full screen photographs for their backgrounds, and they'll usually overlay like white text over them or something like that. And they occasionally have something to do with the website you're on. Sometimes, yeah, if you're lucky. I, uh, I actually like the trend a lot. I think the use of photographs is, uh, is really, really nice. It gives you something to kind of fill these super huge high resolution monitors. And Unsplash is a website, or actually it's another Tumblr blog, look at that, where you can go ahead and download free photographs to use uh, as your background images. Now, like Jason said, if you don't want your photos to have anything to do with the website that, uh, or the text that you have on your page, then this is perfect for that. You can just go ahead and throw up any of these uh, background images and bam, you've got, uh, you've got a modern day website on your hands. Yeah, there you go. Unless, you're, unless your website's about trees and being artistic. Or, then or Ray-Ban sunglasses. It goes perfectly. Yeah. Hmm. Nick. Next up, we have a blog post that is the absolute beginner's guide to Node.js. Oh, good. That's me. Yeah. So you can go ahead and read this article. We'll wait. No, I'm just kidding. Um, as you would expect, this is the, uh, a great introduction to Node.js. Node.js lets you program in JavaScript outside of the web browser. Now, there can be some quirks when you're getting this set up on your system. So this is a great walkthrough about how to get it set up. It describes what Node is, how to install it, how to make sure it's installed correctly. And then something that's really nice, it even goes through using Express.js to create a really small web app that just serves static files. Uh, anyway, really nice introduction. We'll have the link to it in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or in iTunes, search for us at the Treehouse Show. That's really cool. Jason, I just read the article and I didn't note anything, but now I do. That's wonderful. All right. Next up is Buttons, a CSS button library built with SAS and Compass. When you say built with SAS, you mean the programming language, not somebody just being sassy while, while programming, right? It can be both, hmm. especially for you, Jason. So if we scroll down here, we have flat buttons. We got icon buttons. These are buttons that just have icons next to them, as the name implies. There's glow buttons. When you uh, hover over them, they actually glow. That's pretty cool. I think that's also a disease you could look up on WebMD. For that, you just need to take these pill buttons. Uh, there's also square buttons, circle buttons, uh, drop-down menus, etc. You get the idea. It's uh, pretty cool. I mean, there's just a ton of different buttons here. And so, you know, we cover a lot of button libraries here on the Treehouse Show, and you can find a lot of them throughout the web. But this one is pretty robust and should have everything you could possibly need. 
Very nice. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have CompressPNG.com. Uh, as you might guess, this is a website that will compress your PNGs for you. Uh, it will compress them with full browser support, 8-bit um, PNG, I'm sorry, PNG 8 format with full transparency. Huh. Um, it's really, really easy to use. You just drag and drop your files, and then it will convert them, and you are good to go. This also works for JPEGs as well. I, I don't have ad block on right now, so you can you can see the advertisements on the page too. That's wonderful. Well, next up is this new web browser called Blind. Now, if you're developing websites and you have a retina display and you want to see what your website looks like for people that don't have a retina display, you can go ahead and download Blind on the App Store and it will actually show you what your website looks, at, looks like at 1x resolution. This is such a great idea. So if you scroll down, Here's what the browser looks like. It pretty much looks like most web browsers. It has a back button, an address bar, refresh button, etc. And they give you a couple of examples here as to what things look like on a retina display, a low resolution uh, Safari display, uh, the blind browser, etc. Really, really cool idea. Again, it's available in the Mac App Store. And you can go ahead and download it there. It's, it's really cool. I really love that idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a really great idea. Uh, finally, we have something called Formstone by Ben Plum. I guess this could also be Form Street One. This is a collection of jQuery plugins that focus on structure and customization. So we've talked about some of the, these things before, the little navigation icon. You can see these all support configuration and different methods. So you can see right here, click on the demo. Oh, hold on. Don't. I don't actually see it on here. Anyway, most of the other ones work. Um, we'll check out the uh, jQuery picker. You can see if you scroll down here, uh, this is what the radio buttons and check buttons look like with these different options right here. So this is a nice collection of different interface plugins. Uh, really quick idea, but um, great to use if you need to customize your interface at all. Yeah, very cool stuff. Well, I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. If you want more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash GoTreehouse or search for us on iTunes at The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.